Hi guys, today I'm going to replace the drive belt on my Husqvarna rear wheel drive lawnmower. This is an HU700H model, but the process may be the same for other Husqvarna mowers, especially if they are rear wheel drive. You know you need a new belt when either the drive system doesn't engage or it slips kind of easily. Mine was working okay on level ground, but it was having some real trouble with the hills, so time to replace it. The most important first step to working on any lawnmower is to pull the wire off the spark plug. A lawnmower starts by pulling the cord, and when you pull the cord, you're just spinning the motor, and that kicks it in and starts it running. So if you are going to flip this thing upside down and manually spin the blade for any reason, you might accidentally start the mower and cut your arm off. So always disconnect the spark plug. It's very important. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip the unit on its side and I'm going to unscrew the lawnmower blade. Lots of lawnmower blades are reverse threaded, meaning lefty tighty, righty loosey, but this model it's threaded normally. Um, always good to just grab a piece of wood or something to hold the blade in place. Um, also, typically you want to not wear sandals when you're doing this kind of work, but I'm me, so here we go. When you tip your lawnmower up on your side like this, it can leak some gas, so if possible, it's best to do this kind of work when it's out of gas. Uh, in my case, it's not, but it's kind of low. And if you look, I flip it so the gas cap is on the high side, not the low side. So this whole process, nothing leaks for me. But if possible, do it empty. That's the best way to go. Next, I'm going to unbolt the rear wheels. Two of the small screws we need to get at are behind the wheels. You might be able to get them out without taking off the rear wheels, but they come off so easily, it's best to just pull them right off including the plastic shields that keep dirt and debris out of the wheel gears. Now we get to the tricky part. The manual tells you how to do this procedure, but it leaves out all of the details. So these two diagrams are pulled directly from the manual and I colored the one on the right. So the blue piece and the green piece are both pieces of plastic underneath the body of the lawnmower. So we get at it when we flip it over. The blue piece has four little screws holding it in place, and then the green piece has two little screws on top and one bigger screw in the bottom. Once we remove those screws, the two pieces will come out and we'll have full access to the belt. I don't do the best job of showing you where the screws are when I take them apart, but I do a little bit better showing the locations when I put it back together. So I'm going to start by lifting up the rear flap and getting the two smaller screws on each side of the main grass hole with a G. Then I'm going to get the two small screws that would have been behind each of the rear wheels. There's a large screw and a small screw next to each other. The large screw is something else entirely. It's the small ones that we want. And these four screws are the four screws holding in the blue piece from the diagram. Next, while the unit is on its side, I'm going to remove the large bolt that is holding in the green piece from the diagram. Then I'm going to put the unit back upright and remove the two small screws from the top of the body of the mower. And that's what holds on the second piece of plastic that is the green piece from the diagram. With all those screws gone, you're ready to remove the two pieces of plastic. One of them, the blue one, has a small spring hooked onto it that connects to the transmission. So you want to carefully disconnect that little spring and don't lose it. And then the two pieces of plastic should come right out. 
So now I'm just using my hands and taking the old belt off of the pulley that is on the engine shaft and also working it around the tensioner pulley. And then we just have to deal with the transmission pulley. Getting the belt off of the transmission pulley is a little more complicated. It has two guides to prevent it from falling off and you have to pull really hard to squeeze it around those two. Here I'm just showing you the old belt and the new belt. It's kind of hard to see the difference in the video, but in person you can tell that the old one is a little bit more worn. It's about four or five years old and I generally mow every week, so it's definitely seen a lot of use. Getting the new belt on is a little trickier still. It looks like there's a nut on top of that pulley that you can unscrew to remove it, but that nut is actually welded to the pulley itself. But that means you can hook up a socket wrench like I'm doing here and use it to spin that pulley so you can kind of wedge the belt between the guide and the pulley, crank it to spin it with the wrench and that will sort of pull it on. And you have to do that twice because there's two different shields. Once the belt is around the shields, then it's very easy to just put it back in place and loop it around the engine and the tensioner, and then you're good to go. Once the belt is back on there, you reconnect the cable that goes to the handle and you put the spring through the tiny little hole that I zoom in on. And then it's time to put those two plastic baffles back on. They do have tabs, so the two different pieces of plastic actually kind of snap together in addition to screwing in. Now we're gonna screw all the plastic baffles back into place. There are six screws. There's two on the top of the deck. There's one behind each of the rear wheels, which are off so they're exposed, but they would normally be covered. Then there's two behind the rear flap where the grass comes out. That doesn't include the larger one that we already screwed in on the bottom. Also, all of these screws are going into plastic so be careful not to over tighten them because if you strip them out, then the only way to fix it is to replace the baffles themselves. Now I'm gonna put the back wheels back on and the first step to that is putting these little plastic shields back on first and then you put the wheel right on and you tighten it up and it's very easy. Now we're going to put the blade back on and let me just remind you again, never touch the blade without unplugging the spark plug because any amount of movement with the blade could technically start the engine. So I know that the spark plug is still disconnected, but it's good to double check and then just get a block of wood, or in my case, a piece of firewood, just to help hold it in place while you tighten it with the wrench. Now I'm gonna test it out to make sure it works. And of course, I can't start the mower right away because I forgot to plug the spark plug back in, but that's the best problem to have. The worst problem to have is forget to unplug it and then you accidentally start the motor while your hands are on the blade. So this is a great way to mess up. Once it's started, I go back and forth a few times. The belt still is a little slippery, but the more I use it, the more it's starting to grab. So I think the next time I actually mow the lawn in full, uh, by the time I get to the end, it should be running like it's brand new. And that completes the video. Hopefully you find this helpful.